So that kind of segues into the next thing I wanted to talk about with you, which was all this is going on. You mentioned your son is five months old, what you're doing. I like it like that. Mm -hmm. So you have this, this really fabulous career, um, and you have a, a life that's enviable, right, from the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. People who are watching what you're doing have no idea what you're kind of doing behind the scenes, but all they know is that you're booked and busy, mm -hmm. right? You're going from job to job to job. Mm -hmm. You're very likable. You're getting these roles that other people are coveting. Mm -hmm. And so in, during this time, you've fallen in love and gotten married? Oh, no, I've been with my husband for 35 years. Okay, but so but uh, yeah. during during that, that whole time while you're building your career and everything. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. with my husband. Yeah, because yeah, we got together when we were 19. Oh, I didn't know it was that, that early. Yeah. 19. 19. Wow. Yeah, we're celebrating 35 years together in that's October incredible. and then 30 years married in January. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's unheard of in Hollywood. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that I is know. really unheard of. All right. So I um, want to give a shout out to Jay. Hit hey, up. Jay. <laughs> go Brooklyn, USA. White chocolate. What's up, baby? <laughs> Thank you. That was way better than I would have done. Um, so you guys met at 19. So during this whole time where you're pursuing your dreams, you guys are married. He's supporting you. Not supporting you, but supporting supporting your efforts to yes. to make a career for yourself. Yes. I don't know if he's supporting you or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm going to make more money than him, but he's okay. all right with that. All right. <laughs> right, honey? Oh, but, but so yeah. you're getting to do this and yeah. you're yeah. in love and you have this marriage and then you, you have kids. You make the decision to have kids, right? Yes. yes. Um, how old are you? When I'm 54. Oh, you are? I thought you were right around now. the same age. I'm yeah. a little bit older than you. But then when you just made the decision to have kids, you were... I was so... 20... So I had my first at 27. Okay. Yeah. And you have your son. I had my son yes. at 27 mm -hmm. and then I had another son at 33 and then I had my daughter at 38. Okay. All right. I have three children. Yeah. 26, 21, and 16. Wow. Yeah. Um, so tell us what the challenges were in your life then. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, <clears throat> you know, the challenges are, of course, first and foremost, marriage in Hollywood. Um, and, you know, becoming this successful woman and how, how does that dynamic play out with, your husband and how you balance it and the trials and tribulation of just relationship in general. My mm -hmm. husband and I have been through a lot of ups and downs, which is relationship and marriage. But the one thing was like, we don't give up on each other. Right. So, um, so there was that. And for the most part, you know, we, we, we had and have a beautiful family. Um, but things got, really went array um, because our oldest son um, started experimenting with drugs here and there. And of course, it started with weed and then it graduated to different things. How old was he when he started? He was about, when the experimenting started, he was about 14 or so with weed. And okay, you and knew then, about it? I found out about it okay. because a mama finds out about everything. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then he he was an incredible soccer player, like phenom soccer player, mm -hmm. and um, and he got a very very bad injury, and they put him on oxy, mm -hmm. and yeah, and it kind of went from there. And at first we didn't know, and then we knew and we found out and it just became hell mm -hmm. for us and for him. But he was Absolute in high school hell. then when this, this came out? No, he, he was in his, um, when we found out how bad it was, he was in his first year of college. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it was, it just, it, it became hell. Suddenly it was like, you know, you do what every parent does. You kind of look at yourself and you're like, oh my God, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. What what did I do? What did we do? What, you know, and then you blame each other and, you know, it starts to kind of bleed out into the family and then you don't understand and you're, you feel like you're in 
you're in like the eye of some kind of a storm and in and, and you're drowning and you're just trying to you know stay up afloat and and on top of that I couldn't fall apart um, because I was the I was the rock in the family I was the financial provider I was like all these things I was mom I was everything the way most of our women are and mm. who we are as mothers especially we take care of everybody and it just literally became brutal and then I was diagnosed with breast cancer mm. and that was brutal and um, so wait oh, how old was he when you got diagnosed with breast cancer so that was like three years ago so it was, he was like 23 okay 22 23 something like that yeah. um, and you know had to had to go through that and three surgeries and worried about work and the beautiful thing was that you know like I had this family of friends besides my own family but this family of friends that just boy they just kind of just gathered around me mm -hmm. and really held me up and then you know my faith just became very strong it was like that was the moment where I needed to let go of everything yeah. and realize that I had no control my life was out of control it was like oh my gosh what is happening right now and for the most part um, I couldn't even think about my breast cancer all that much because I was just thinking about my child and I was just like I please God just let him live just please God just keep my baby alive please God just and I prayed for him every day still do Mm -hmm. And um, really hard. Yeah. I. I'm. I'm wondering. Um, I'm sorry. Thank you, know, you that you had that experience. And um, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's challenging. It's really challenging. And and and, you know, having to go shoot, and be a professional, yeah. and hold it together, and trying to protect him. Sure. You know, and I getting more and more visibility in my career and just you know I'm a person who lives my truth for the most part yes you are you know I live yeah. my truth and so my circle of friends always knew what was happening in my life and they were so good to me and so you know you find out quickly who your friends are when you're going through all this really tough stuff and mm. there were people that were not there for me and then there were people that were and um, do you feel like it was maybe too much for some of your friends, like they couldn't... It could be. It, yeah. it could be. It could be too much, but for me, true friendship is when it is too much, but you're unselfishly, yes. like, not thinking about you're too much. You're yeah. thinking about someone else's too much. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And um, that was really hard. That was the hard, probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to maintain that you know that professionalism and maintain my life and just but that's where the trust came in for God like I, I had a trust mm -hmm. I was like <laughs> I don't know what's happening here and everything's been pulled out from under me but you know um, I'm just gonna keep going and um, were you and your husband at this point were you guys able to be there for each other not always no not always so then that was even more, oh, yeah. more became, isolating oh right? my gosh it became very strenuous and but the amazing thing about my husband and I is we have been through some you know what mm -hmm. and at the end of the day we come together and neither one of us is willing to to let go and abandon yeah. completely yeah. you know it's it's this thing like you know it's it's love it's friendship it's you know, it's life, it's, it's, you know, and I'm, I'm a praying woman, and I'm like a faithful woman, and I don't, if I was not, I don't think we would have made it. No. We wouldn't have made it. Yeah. And I may have been in a basket case in some psycho hospital, <laughs> too, because that's how you feel. That's how you feel. Yeah. So my faith has been everything mm -hmm. in this situation, and... Thank God my, my son is in recovery by his choosing. And how did, is, how did that happen? How did your son get so into he, recovery? So he came to us and he was like, I, I really need help. And he had been, like, he'd been 
there before and all of that kind of stuff and never stuck with it, never never you had, stayed. You had tried to intervene before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Had, did you oh, actually yeah. hold an intervention at some point? We did not. No, not, not, not that not way. Not an official way, but... But we, I mean, you, you know, you pull everything out of the hat. Yeah. Was he living with you? He was at, mm -hmm. uh, at one point, several points he was living with yeah. us and then living, you know, not with us. Um, but, um, but he he, he yeah. finally came yeah. and said, I need, I really need help. And so, you know, as you go through this, you know, as parents, you also have work to do, you know, creating some boundaries. And that's really, really hard when you've been parents who give everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, you know, if, if my kid sneezed and used a tissue, I was like, oh, let me buy you a car. You know, it was like, <laughs> it was like it's not an over response. You know, no. You know. Um, but that, that was mostly my Jewish husband. I was like, you have to stop. You're finagling and <laughs> getting involved. And so, translation, like, yeah, Yiddish. Right, right. Doing too much. I was like, you're like a Jewish mother. <laughs> it was impossible. Um, but I am so proud of my son. Mm -hmm. because that takes a lot and he was brave and and we had to be brave and we had to kind of let go of him and trust and not trying to fix everything and answer to his every whim as far as like recovery is concerned and what that means um i want i want to ask you about that because that's really evolved mm -hmm. um in any area of life mm -hmm. especially and I'm, I'm not putting anything on you, but it seems like you're used to being able to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is an area where you can't make something happen, right? Right. Um, how does that feel? To What does that process look like of letting go? Well, it's, it's the hardest thing in the whole wide world for a mother, for a, a parent. Um, because as a parent, and I'm gonna speak as a mother, mm -hmm. you, want to fix everything you want to take care of your child you want to make sure that they they need for nothing they're not in pain um and when it comes to addiction you don't realize that you become an enabler and you know you become codependent and there are all these things that you don't know about and that's why it's on us to become educated and to do our own work and not just put it on the person who's going through the addiction, right? Because we each play a role. And that when getting to that point is really hard because in our own skewed way, we think we're doing the best job. We think we're doing everything we're supposed to do. Yeah. But Because your not. instinct is telling you That's right. to take care of, to That's to, right. to help, to aid, to ensure. Completely. Yeah. And there comes a point where that other person needs to take care of themselves. That other person is responsible for their own choices and behavior. That other person is making decisions that have nothing to do with you. So you can't try to jump in and fix and do and save them because actually you're just hindering them. Mm -hmm. But the reason it's so hard for a parent is because that's what we do innately. For our children so it's like separating that and figuring that out is the hardest thing to do and when your child has a really challenging har horrible addiction all you think about is please don't die yeah I have to keep you alive please don't die and it's horrible I mean you lose sleep you just you develop you know quirks and mm -hmm. all kinds of things yeah. you know that that weren't there before and um, and and you get to hopefully you get to that point where you realize you must detach you must detach with love you must create your own boundaries you must surrender you yourself have to surrender to God to your higher power and realize that you're not in control and you put them into God's hands and say I trust you father God mm -hmm. you're you're in control and I need to accept that and yeah. you know whatever the will your will is that it's I just need to love my child the right way mm -hmm. and so getting to that
point ooh, is grueling. And you, the amount of suffering that a parent will take, the mm. amount of abuse, the amount of pain that we will put up with for our child is extraordinary. Yes, it is. Extraordinary. Yeah. Um, but I realized that I needed to do the work so that I can help my son the right way, the way he needs to be helped. Mm -hmm. and